YouTube, what's good? We're back in this thing. Today we're gonna be going over the seamless transition. It's basically where a clip's playing it on your monitor or TV, and then you have it zoom into that and it transitions into the actual clip and you won't be able to tell exactly where the cut's at. I see people do this a lot and most of the time they kind of have it look a little choppy or you can tell where the cut's at. And when it's done that way, it just seems a little unprofessional and not really what you want. So I'm gonna be showing you guys all the secret sauce that I know on how to make it look really smooth and you won't be able to tell where the cut's at. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. 65% of the people that watch my channel are not and we're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. If you're looking for some music video editing assets and trying to level up your editing game, go to my website, brandalmata.com, and check out my texture pack and a few other preset packs that are up there right now. But yeah, that's enough talking. Let's break down this effect. All right, so now that we're in Premiere, I'm going to be showing you guys what you need and how to do this effect. So basically, all you need is two separate clips, one clip of your video already playing on your monitor. So for example here, we have Lil Dirk and Killeroy playing on the monitor and we walk into it and then we have the actual clip playing below it. So you can see this is the actual clip and then this is the clip of the footage playing on my computer. So now you're going to want to find a spot in your footage that you want to have playing on your monitor when you walk in. So I'm going to have, I want it to transition right around this clip of Kid Leroy. So that's where I filmed and I specifically wanted it to transition kind of right where he puts his hands up and it comes in focus, this frame right here. So I'm going to go ahead and push M on my keyboard to make a marker. And then basically go ahead and load this up. You know, you can have it play in Premiere, you can have it playing just on your monitor, on your TV, basically wherever you want. And then go ahead and record that. So you can see that's what we did here. I'm just gonna go ahead and choose some in and out points uh, in here. And then right where he puts his hands up is where I'm gonna, that frame right there is where I want it to end. And we can always go ahead and tweak that once we drag it out. And let's see how that looks. And you can see that cuts really well. So if you play it right now, this is what the transition looks like. It's cool. And a lot of people, what they do is they just zoom right into here. And that's cool. You can get a similar look, but it's not going to look as good as the way I'm going to do it. It definitely takes a little bit more time and effort, but I think when you're an editor and you do an effect, you should do it right and spend the time on it. Because if you do an effect and it, you know, it looks a little out of place, then the effect's not good. Effects are supposed to basically enhance videos and not be noticeable, really, unless it's like a flashy effect. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is, uh, because it's handheld, I'm just gonna add some warp stabilizer on it just to make it a little smoother and just bring the smoothness to five. Basically, if you shoot it handheld, you're gonna have some jitters and stuff and it makes it a little harder to mask out. So I just went ahead and did the warp stabilizer. But if you shoot with the stabilizer or you know, you're, or you're able to not have those jitters or whatever, then you don't really need to do this. I just think it makes it look a little smoother. And then I also am going to add on lens distortion. And the reason for that is just because we want this line down here to be straight. And you can see since it's like a wider angle lens, there's a little bit of distortion here. Fix that, we're just gonna go ahead and go to curvature, bring it to like negative six or something. So it's pretty smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I think it just helps the overall look and makes it easier for you if you do that. Now, after rendering that out, you can see that it looks like this and it's already looking a little bit better. There's obviously still that hard jump right there, but that can be fixed. So then I'm gonna go to the last frame right here, right before it switches over, keyframe the scale and position. And I'm just gonna scale in just a tad. So the frame is like basically touching on one corner or one part of the video. You can see right here, it's touching at the top or just about. And then I'm going to go to the beginning and reset both the keyframes position and scale, depending on if you move the position or anything. But just so it has, just so it touches, depending on your clip or whatever, you might be a little bit further away from the footage or whatever. So that's why I told you to do that. For me, I didn't really need to, uh, just in case you didn't go close enough to the footage, that's what you can do. And then this is kind of the sauce here. You're going to want to go and use the corner pin effect and keyframe all of the corners right on the last frame here and then click on the upper left or whatever one so these boxes come up. And then you're just gonna wanna drag them to all the corners like this. If you push the tilde key right next to the one on your keyboard, it's in the top left hand part of your keyboard, and you click on the playback program area, it is going to zoom in so you can see a little bit better. And then you'll be able to drag them in a little bit more accurately. And one thing I like to do is turn down the opacity here and really just try to get it to match as much as possible. You can see like if you were out of line here or something, for example, I'll uh, bring a little bit. You can see now the boxes or the sandbags are out of place. But for us, this looks really good actually. All the corners seem to be aligning pretty well. You can spend a lot of time. The more time you spend and obviously the better you line it up, the better the effect's gonna look. 
But for right now, this looks really good. And then I'm just gonna go 10 frames to the left. So if you hold shift on your keyboard and go back on the play button, it's gonna go five frames at a time. So I just did that twice. And then go ahead and reset them all. And then I'm gonna highlight all those keyframes and just make sure to move it to the last frame. And then also be sure to turn back on the opacity to 100. And then you can see once you render that out, the transition is pretty much done. There's a few things you can do to really sauce it up and make it look a lot better. So I'm gonna be showing you these next steps. If you really wanted to, you could stop here and probably get away with it. But I think the next thing is really gonna level it up and make it so you really cannot see that, that cut. So now I'm gonna go 10 frames to the left. So basically where the corner pin starts and drag your video playback clip or the actual clip of the actual footage above your monitor clip or your TV clip. And I'm gonna go ahead and use that corner pin tool. And we're gonna go ahead and match it as best you can to the footage that you have. And this is why the lens distortion really helps because it's gonna make it a lot easier here. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of spots where it doesn't match perfectly, but this is really gonna level it up. And then you can also use that technique where you uh, lower the opacity so you can see the lineup a little bit more and then make sure to keyframe them. And then I like going five frames to the right and relining it up. Then go to the last frame right where it's supposed to transition and reset all the keyframes so they're all in the proper spot and it looks normal. And then be sure to drink, bring up the opacity as well. And then I just bring it below your clip again. That won't have done anything visible yet. So then what you're gonna need to do is go to your effects and type in crop and drag that on to the clip that is your monitor or your TV clip. And then again, I'm gonna go 10 frames to the left. So right where that transition starts where everything has started so far, use the pen tool on your crop tool here and go ahead and make a box around your clip and then keyframe the path, go five frames, reposition it so it matches all the corners. Go to the last frame right here and then drag it all the way to the corners. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the background layer or the video layer, the layer of the actual video clip. So you can see what we're doing here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag left 100%. Doesn't really matter which one you drag, you just have to drag one of them 100% so it does that crop out. And then I'm gonna go mass expansion, bring that in a little bit and then feather it. Really depends on your clip to how much. And then just play around with the settings. Basically what you want is you want the black part to be inside of the boundaries of the video here and faded pretty well. It doesn't have to be super perfect. I just think it really adds an extra layer of smoothness to the transition. So I think something like this for us looks really good. And then you can turn on the clip to see what we're working with. And you can't even really tell that it's there. You might have a little bit of black bars here, but you can go ahead and play with that so you make sure you don't have any edges. Basically just play with the mass expansion and then you won't be able to see that at all. I think if it's just a little bit, you won't really notice too much anyways. And then making sure you're at that 10th frame or when the corner pin starts to come in, go ahead and keyframe the mask opacity to zero and then go all the way to the end or to the last frame and keyframe that to 100. And that's just gonna have it fade in. So it's gonna be super smooth either way and you're not really gonna be able to tell when that mask comes in or not. And now you can see once you render that out, you can see your smooth clip. And you cannot tell where it cuts exactly. It just looks like it zooms in. And then I think this is a really cool effect, honestly, if you have your video playing on a TV or monitor, it takes a little bit of pre-planning so it definitely doesn't go unnoticed with all of the actual extra effort going in. I don't think it's too hard to pull off and make it look really, really good. So that's why I'm a big fan of it. You know, if it's your music video or whatever, maybe there's some things that you would tweak this, but for the sake of the tutorial, I think this looks really, really smooth. Basically, you could go frame by frame tweaking each keyframe and stuff so it looks the smoothest, but honestly, this is really passable. You could play with lumetri color. And if you're taking the time to pre-shoot the footage and then record it in a room, Maybe if you recorded it in a room, the same color lighting, it would help out merge the clips a little bit more if you can understand what I'm saying. So for example, the video footage that I chose here is red and then I had this orangish light in the background. That way, so if any reflections show on the monitor, 
it's our, it's at least in the same color scheme as the footage. You can see, for example, the footage is maybe a little bit bluer. If you really wanted to, you could just bring the temperature on the footage up just a little bit. And then you can see once you render that with the temperature change, it'll look a little bit smoother. These are all things that are minor tweaks that will really help sell your footage. But that's pretty much all I got for you guys in this tutorial. If you made it all the way to the end and you haven't already liked the video, be sure to do that. If you haven't already commented, you know, say something, say something about the effect, say what effect you want to see next say just a random fact or something. And if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to do that. We're going for 100,000 subscribers, like I already mentioned in the beginning of the video. Tell a friend about the channel. Follow me on Instagram because we are going to be dropping the V2 of the Paper Texture Pack very soon, uh, right when we get 50,000 subscribers on this YouTube channel. So I'm gonna be giving out discount codes, interacting with you guys, all that stuff. I just stay posted when I go on Twitch and just it's a really good way to interact with me. So go ahead and shoot your boy a DM. One last thing before I end too, if you wanna support the channel even more, go to my website, check out my editing packs. It helps you get cool looks and effects on your music videos as well as supports the channel. So I really do appreciate it. But yeah guys, that's all I got for you guys in this one.